Okay, this is 120 class, and we're going to start with some uh, phrases. So go over them quickly because you probably should know them already. I can help you. Um, stop me if you don't, if you have any questions. As follows S F O L S, as follows. As a rule, S R U L. As a rule, as a result, S R U L T, as a result, as the result, S T R U L T, as the result, whether or not, W H R O R N T, whether or not, as follows, as a rule, as a result, as the result, whether or not. Did you find me, Kate? Yeah. Okay. All right, L final RT, all right. For instance, F R I N S. For instance, for example, F R E X, for example, F R E X. For the F final R T, for the. For the record, F R O R D, for the record. For identification, F O I D, for identification. All right. For instance, for example, for them, <coughs> for the record, for identification. As follows For instance, as a rule, all right. As a result, for the, as the result, whether or not, for identification, for the record, all right. Okay, sentences. For identification is F I R D. For identification, I have F O I D, but yours could be different. What, what, oh, I have F O I D for identification. Okay, so each of these sentences, um, I think for the most part, there's like three, sentence, uh, three sentences for each one of these phrases. So I'll say the phrase in the outline first and then the sentence, that's okay. As follows, S-F-O-L-S, -S, as follows. The directions read as follows. As far as I know, the notices were printed as follows. As a matter of fact, he replied to your letter as follows. Should be finding that there's phrases that we've already learned that are coming up in these as well, okay? As a rule, S-R-U-L, as a rule. As a rule, they have had good results at all times. I want to thank you for being early as a rule. As a rule, I have had no such problem as far as I remember. As a result, S R U L T, as a result. As a result of these injuries, I am unable to participate as much as I would like. As a result, of his speech, the participation has increased at this time. As many as 50 people have purchased tickets as a result of the ad campaign. As the result, S-T-R-U-L-T, <clears throat> as the result, as the result, shows very little was done at that time. A little profit was made as the result of his hard work. As the result will show, as near as I can determine, $1,000 
was realized. Whether or not, W-H-R-O-R-N-T, whether or not. Tell me whether or not he was present at any time. Whether or not the event was successful cannot be determined at the present time. In other words, we need to wait for the audit to determine whether or not it was successful. As a matter of fact, he is all right at this time. All right, L-R-T. In other words, he was all right when you last saw him. His fever broke at which time he was all right. Please make sure it is all right for us to come at that time. By the way, the word all right is never one word. It's not all right to, to, for all right to be one word. It's always two words, okay? For instance, F-R-I-N-S, for instance, for instance, did he drink as many as six beers? Well, for instance, she would talk at the same time as the speaker. We have had, for instance, many inquiries as the result of this advertising. For example, F-R-E-X, for example. For example, his grades were lower at the time of his illness. His success was greater, for example, after properly preparing. For example, failure can be used as a learning experience. For the members of the jury, I would like to adjourn at this time. Uh, what is this? For the F final RT for the, okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we will recess at this time for the afternoon. Your Honor, at the time, I will wait for the witness to arrive. For the record, F-R-O-R-D, for the record. Ma'am, please state your name for the record. You are to tell the truth at all times for the record. For identification, F-O-I-D, for identification. Ladies and gentlemen, we will mark this exhibit for identification. The photograph which was taken as soon as he arrived was marked for identification. For identification purposes, please state your name and current address at this time. Okay, we're going to go back now and repeat some sentences from um, former phrases. 
and we'll do these for a rebound. Okay, here we go. Tell us as well as you can what he did next. He went as far as the door and stopped. No, it wasn't as much as that. I'd say as many as 20 left immediately. I came as soon as I could. As a matter of fact, you never did tell him. I felt, in other words, it was a mistake. On the other hand, he did owe me the money. <coughs> <laughs> he was as near as from me to you. Members of the jury, we thank you. Did you ever see the defendant at this time? Did this occur at the same time? It was about 12 o'clock at that time. I did not see him at any time. What is your address at the present time? He pleaded guilty at the time of arraignment. It all happened at the same time. He fell, at which time he broke his leg. I felt that we should be prepared at all times. You arrived at what time? At which time did they return? Okay, let's take a look at those and read back those. <clears throat> Araceli, can you go ahead? Tell us as well as you can what you did next. That's how you each take three. Okay. He went as far as the door and stopped. No, it wasn't as, much, as many as that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have as many as it should be as much as, which should be as C H S. Okay, good. Kate? I'd say as many as 20 left immediately. I, I came as soon as I could. As a matter of fact, you never did so. I thought, in other words, it would be a mistake. In order. On the other hand, yes, he did owe he did owe me the money. He was as near as from me to you. Good. Members of the jury, we thank you. Did you ever see the defendant at this time? Did this occur at the same time? It was about twelve o'clock at that time. I did not see him. I did not see him at any time. What is your address at the present time? He pleaded guilty at the time of arraignment. It all happened at the same time. He fell at which time he broke his leg. I felt that we should be prepared at all times. You arrived at what time? At which time did they return? Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Okay, I'm going to move on now and do back to a former 
PV360 material from the far quarter. And I think we're going to start with the literary. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start off at 100. I'll get a little bit at 120 in here. So I'm going to start at 100, go up a little bit, and then back down. Okay, on the record. So how happy are you to find out that we're limited on the number of witnesses we can bring? I'm sure you guessed that, speaking for myself, we can get fairly caught up in this and do nothing but this for some period of time. But it's always interesting when things happen in life that say something about what we can talk about in this case. I don't know how many of you saw this. What a great story. If you didn't see it, a pilot landed a plane on the Hudson River and everyone survived. At about midnight, the newspapers were able to give an account of what happened minute by minute with that crew and those passengers. How many hundreds of flights has that crew made where nothing happened? And then when something did, they were all there. The answer to that whole business about in the event of a water landing, which we all listened to in Tucson, but they all did. They all just stopped and thought and did it. And then you see that great picture of these people standing on that wing, waiting to be picked up, and nobody died. And, of course, it's always all about me. What we have in this case is what we have for every one of us in whatever job we do, but especially the jobs that have to do with safety. You go for days, weeks, months, years, where things are just always the way you expect. And then there's the moment when something happens and what we ask of ourselves is to think and fall back on our training and face it and look at it and deal with it and deal with it in a reasonable way. I have no doubt that the nurses at the life care see hundreds of people every day with Foley catheters, and 99 out of 100 of them never have a problem. But they know because we know from that care plan that every once in a while there's going to be a moment or a number of moments where you see something. And what we ask of ourselves then is to stop and look at it and think and use our training and deal with it. So, I'm sure you understand now that unlike on television, a trial is a tedious process because with each witness, you get a little piece of information. A little bit over here and a little piece of information may fit over there in each exhibit, and so now is the time when we put all those little pieces in place and step back and look at the picture and say, what have I got? 
So that's what this is now. It's the opportunity for me to talk, hopefully, as briefly as possible about what that picture may look like to you. In your instructions, there's a couple of things. If you think about maybe the thought process you will use in doing your job, you have that burden of proof instruction that says the evidence that favors the party outweighs the opposing evidence. Consider all the evidence. Those are the scales that we talk about in the beginning, that you start off with these scales even. And at any given part of the case, when you are trying to decide something, you look at the evidence and first, you figure out, does this evidence even belong on the scales? Is this evidence really something that helps with this particular question? So do we put it on the scales? And then after you do that, you look at the scales and see if they're tipped. And if they're tipping, more than 50% one way, then if it's something I have to prove, I have met my burden. Your jury instruction that talks about the credibility of witnesses, there's a line in there about you evaluate people with reason, common sense, and experience. This is the part where you come in. As you look at things, there's a lot of technical terms, and you've learned a little bit about them, but in the end, what it really is about is what feels right to you, <laughs> what makes sense to you, given what you've learned. And that's where the reason and common sense and experience for you comes in. And then, you have the jury instruction that tells you what the issues are, and this is the framework, and I'm going to use in each of these issues. Was life care negligent? Was that negligence a cause of Clark's death and plaintiff's damages? So if we talk about life care's negligence, what does this tell us about the thought process? What can we say about the thought process that was involved? And we talked about Clark David, who was the first part of this chain of events where he put on his note the check mark that the Foley was discontinued. Not a huge part of the equation, but it's where we start because when did the eight hours start? And what we really need to talk about is what went on in the day and evening shift on the 17th. But is there a pattern here when we see that there was no effort to at least record in the chart when that was done? And I know we've heard a lot about this being a documentation technicality, but it's a reflection of the thought process. Why did Life Care choose forms that had the date and time on them if date and time wasn't something that should be there? So, we start with that. Okay, that was really long. I don't know if you guys have ever written a, a segment that long. Eight minutes. Good. So we... <laughs> um, so we started at 100, and then I went up to 120 for maybe two minutes, and then went back down to 110, and then finished at 100. Felt like it was probably halfway decent material. Okay, I'm gonna do a jury charge now because I see that there are some briefs in here 
that I have actually often looked for. And so I'm glad I came across this. As long as I lift them up, because they're on here, and these come up. There's just a couple of them here that come up a lot. Um, H O E R C. Ever seen that? That is, ooh, I don't know which one it is. Oh, yes, I do. That is uh, he or she. He or she. This can be kind of confusing, but boy, this, typically, like this comes out all the way through here. So typically, when they use it, it comes up frequently. The other one is H I R C. What do you think that one is? Hmm, very close. His or her. His or her has come up a lot in jury charge. Okay, so we have he or she and his or her. So I'm going to start off by reading this little section where this comes up and then we'll go back and do the whole thing and so you'll hear more than once. On the record, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in regard to the third element, the state must prove, as I have stated, that the defendant acted knowingly or purposefully in manufacturing cocaine. A person acts knowingly with respect to the nature of his or her conduct or the attendant circumstances if he or she is aware that his or her conduct is of that nature or that such circumstances exist or he or she is aware of a high probability of their existence. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a person acts knowingly with respect to a result of his or her conduct if he or she is aware that it is practically certain that his or her conduct will cause such a result. Knowing with knowledge or equivalent terms have the same meaning. A person acts purposely with respect to the nature of his or her conduct or a result thereof if it is his or her conscious object to engage in conduct of that nature or to cause such a result a person acts purposely with respect to attendant circumstances if he or she is aware of the existence of such circumstances or he or she believes or hopes that they exist. write these on something else that I use more frequently. Okay, so let's go back and start at the beginning now. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the defendant has been charged by indictment with the crime of manufacturing a controlled and dangerous substance and the use of a controlled and dangerous substance. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the pertinent part 
of the statute on which this indictment is based reads as follows. Except as authorized by statute, it shall be unlawful for any person knowingly or purposely to manufacture a controlled dangerous substance or use a controlled substance. The various kinds of substances are defined in another part of our statute, such as heroin and cocaine, and are considered dangerous substances as prohibited by the statute. The defendant does not claim legal authorization. So the exceptions in the statute are not applicable in this case. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the statute read together with the indictment identifies the elements which the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt to establish guilt of the defendant on this count of the indictment. The elements contained in the indictment are as follows. One, that the defendant manufactured cocaine on the date alleged in the indictment. And two, that the defendant acted knowingly or purposely in manufacturing cocaine when it is alleged that a controlled substance has been manufactured, the following definition of controlled substance is charged in regard to the first element. A controlled substance is a substance which, one, has a chemical structure substantially similar to that of a controlled dangerous substance, and two, was specifically designed to produce an effect substantially similar to that of a controlled substance. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in this case, the indictment alleges that the defendant manufactured, which is an analog of the controlled dangerous substance. Thus, to establish this element, ladies and gentlemen, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was a substantially similar chemical structure to the controlled dangerous substance and that it was specifically designed to produce an effect substantially similar to the controlled dangerous substance. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in regard to the second element, to manufacture means the production, preparation, propagation, compounding, conversion or processing of a controlled dangerous substance or controlled substance analog, either directly or by extraction from substances or natural origin or independently by means of chemical synthesis or by a combination of extraction and chemical synthesis and includes any packaging or repackaging of the substance or labeling or relabeling of its contents, except that this term does not include the preparation or compounding of a controlled dangerous substance or controlled substance analog by an individual for his or her own use or the preparation, compounding, packaging, or labeling of a controlled dangerous substance. This is tough. Oh, uh, MFR? Yeah, it came up a lot, huh? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what this animal, what this thing, what they're referring to when they're talking about the 
analog. What was that in Memphis? It came up a couple of times. It was awkward. Okay. How would you spell that? Analog. Analog. Just two strokes. Analog. You'd have to. How would it come out as an and then log? It would probably. Yeah. But you know what? If you hit it in three strokes and a log until it's in your dictionary that way, it would also come up as three words. Yeah. Yeah. Although I'm sure you could word define it for those three strokes. Or Here's the thing. Grammatically speaking, it would be improper to say N log. So you really could define it that way in the dictionary and that would not be a problem. Okay. What do you think it's like using real tank in class? Because I, I, I don't know, I find it very useful. Yeah. A lot of things. Yeah. You know, you probably could start anytime. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. But, but the, the problem being is that you don't want to get into the habit at the speed of watching your screen and such, you know, because it kind of reading notes at this level is really better for you because you're really able to see what you've written and, and have to figure out your notes. Whereas when you're writing on your machine, a lot of times if, if your um, sensitivity in the keys and such, um, you may end up with a lot of errors that you really wouldn't have if you were to read your notes because you would recognize it in your notes. So you wouldn't recognize it yet. Not all the time. Yeah. Um, I think, I can't remember on the schedule now whether you guys have this close next quarter or not. But I think she may, if you do, I think she's, you know, going to work with you more. With that. Um, okay, let's go back and look at, not look at, but let's go back and now we're going to get to the part with the his or her and the he and she. He or she, not and. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in regard to the second element, to manufacture means the production, preparation, propagation, compounding, conversion, or processing of a controlled dangerous substance or controlled substance analog either directly or by extraction from substances or natural origin, or independently by means of chemical synthesis or by a combination of extraction and chemical synthesis, and includes any packaging or repackaging of the substance or labeling or relabeling of its contents, except that this term does not include the preparation or compounding of a controlled dangerous substance or controlled substance analog by an individual for his or her own use or the preparation, compounding, packaging, or labeling of a dangerous controlled substance. One, by a practitioner as an incident to his or her administering or dispensing of a controlled dangerous substance or controlled substance analog in the course of his or her professional practice, or two, by a practitioner or under his or her supervision for the purpose of or as an incident to research, teaching, or chemical analysis and not for sale. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in this regard, the term practitioner means a physician dentist, veterinarian, scientific investigator, laboratory, pharmacy, hospital, or other person licensed, registered, or otherwise permitted to distribute, 
dispense, conduct research with respect to, or administer a controlled substance or controlled substance analog in the course of all pra professional practice or research in this state. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in regard to the third element, the state must prove, as I have stated, that the defendant acted knowingly or purposefully in manufacturing cocaine. A person acts knowingly with respect to the nature of his or her conduct or the attendant circumstances if he or she is aware that his or her conduct is of that nature or that such circumstances exist or he or she is aware of a high probability of their existence. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, a person acts knowingly with respect to a result of his or her conduct if he or she is aware that it is practically certain that his or her conduct will cause such a result, knowing with knowledge or equivalent terms have the same meaning. A person acts purposely with respect to the nature of his or her conduct or a result thereof if it is his or her conscious object to engage in conduct of that nature or to cause such a result. A person acts purposely with respect to attendant circumstances if he or she is aware of the existence of such circumstances, he or she believes or hopes that they exist. Ladies and gentlemen, the terms with purpose, designed with design, design with design or equivalent have the same meaning. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Remember that when we speak of knowingly and purposely, we're speaking of conditions of the mind that cannot be seen. It is not necessary for the state to prove the existence of such mental states by direct evidence, such as a statement by the defendant that he or she had particular knowledge or a particular purpose. Knowledge and purpose as separate propositions of proof do not commonly exist. They must ordinarily be discovered as other mental states are from circumstantial evidence, that is, by reference to the defendant's conduct, words or acts, and all the surrounding circumstances. To reiterate, the three elements of this offense are that one, that the defendant manufactured cocaine on the date alleged in the indictment, and two, that the defendant acted knowingly or purposefully in manufacturing cocaine. If you find that the state has proven all these elements beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must return a verdict of guilty. On the other hand, if you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, find that the state has failed to prove any of these elements beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must return a verdict of not guilty. New Jersey law grades this offense for sentencing purposes by the type, quantity, and purity of the controlled substance involved. understand how it makes sense in this setting. An adjective of or relating to a device or process in which data is represented by physical quantities that change continuously. Okay, so they're talking about manufacturer of Pardon? Like their inventory? No, it's kind of like their, um, in this case, their controlled substance, you know, they're manufacturing it. And so it's changeable. 
they don't know for sure what the substance might be. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Variable physical quantities. Okay. I think we're just going to go over a little bit of this again and then, actually, I think I might have four takes for you today for getting out. Got a 120, next is all up, 100. Here I have them. I can give you four takes. You know, let's just go ahead and start those, okay? We'll do that. We'll do that instead. Okay, so we're going to start with a We do one at 120. And it is a library. And I'm going to end our practice session. And then I'll restart the recording.